In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at how we can use HQL to query with Hibernate. In a previous video, we saw how we can use Hibernate to very easily and very naturally save a new object into a local MySQL database. So in this video, we're going to go the other way. We're going to see what we need to do to take the information out of our database and display it in our web page. Now, there'll probably be several videos here. One, this one focused on HQL. Uh, and a future video is going to take a look at a data table, which is a prime faces widget that we're going to use to actually show this on a screen. But uh, we'll break that into a couple different videos. So, first of all, what is HQL? HQL is a query-like syntax that we can use with Hibernate, very similar to SQL. But instead of talking in the language of a database, we're talking in the language of a programmer. In other words, instead of using tables and columns to do a query, uh, we're using classes and properties. So an HQL statement, first of all, if we're selecting, uh, don't worry about the select star part of it. We start directly with a from clause. And what we'll typically do is we need to create a query object. Uh, and then we'll run our query inside that query object. We'll see an example of that in just a moment. But to create our query object, we're going to get a Hibernate session just like we did in a previous video when we were saving from some information. At that point, we did session.save. At this point, we're going to do session.createQuery, and we're going to provide our HQL syntax in, as a parameter to this createQuery method. When we run a, want to run the query, we're going to say query.list. Now, we'll oftentimes want to set some parameters, like we might say, give me all of the red buds. If that's the case, we're going to use a syntax where we have a colon and then a parameter name. And that says in our HQL, we're going to save this space for a parameter that we can add later. So in other words, from plants uh, where plant name equals colon plant name. That would be an example of a parameter. In this case, I'm just saying colon parameter name, which is kind of generic. We can explicitly set the value of that parameter by using the parameter name as a string and then passing in the value we want to hold for that parameter. Alternatively, one that works pretty well, is pretty handy, is we can just say query.setProperties and we can have it automatically match the properties on this object with the parameters that we have specified in the query statement. This is probably easiest to see with an example over just explaining it. So let's do an example. I'm going to go to the plant HBM DAO that we created in a prior video. And I'm going to control M so that we can see it in high definition. So uh, insert, this is the one we did in the previous video where we got our session, begin transaction, save, and then get, uh, get transaction commit. Now we don't necessarily need a transaction for a select uh, because we're just treating that as read only. Where here we need a transaction because we're actually changing or modifying the database. Nonetheless, we can go ahead and borrow this uh, create session line, and I'm going to put this up in our fetch plants method. Okay, session, just like so. Now I'm going to say create the query, and I'll say session, and then we will say create query. And notice that the create query method accepts a string. Okay, go ahead and terminate with a semicolon before I forget. Now remember, we don't need a select statement. We just start with our from clause. So I'll say from plants where, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say common, where common equals uh, and then colon common. And you see the colon common, that is our parameter. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, what does our plant DTO look like? Our plant DTO has an attribute called common, and that's good news. As long as I use the same word over here in the query, it becomes easy to match 
these two things together. That's probably going to be easiest to see in an example. So let's go ahead and, co and continue on with our example. First of all, the session.createQuery is going to return a query object to us. We know in Eclipse there's an easy way to assign the value that's returned from a method to a variable. And that is put your cursor on the method, hold control press 1, and then say assign statement to new local variable. And you'll see that what it does is it returns to us this query object that we're going to use. Let's go ahead and, and uh, shorten this guy up a little bit, uh, just like so, and enter. Okay, now I have this query object, which is going to allow me to specify what parameter I want to pass into this placeholder. So I could say something like this. I could say query, uh, and then I could say set parameter. And I could simply say common, and then I could say uh, red button. And you see, in this case, we're explicitly setting that parameter common here to the word red button here. Okay, let's go one more step. Uh, let's make a new method because at this point fetch plants isn't actually, this is assuming that we're returning all plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new method. We'll say public list plant. We're going to override the method up above. And we're going to say fetch plants. And then we're going to say plant plant. What this means is the, the parameter that we have here called plant plant. That's saying we're collecting some kind of information from the user on which plant they want to see. So this is their search criteria, in other words. Uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and grab this work I've been working on here. And honestly, I'm just going to move it down. probably makes more sense to deal with these two methods separately. Okay, so we have an overridden method, fetch plants. And what does it not like? Uh, the method must return... A result of type list plant. Okay, we'll handle that in just a moment. For the moment, I don't like seeing red lines though, so I'll just say return new array list plant, like so, just so we can take care of that red line, but this line is only temporary. Control Shift O, organize imports. Okay, now red lines are gone, we're good. So, okay, so you see in this case we're passing in a parameter called plant, and what I could do now is make this more dynamic by saying plant dot get common. Okay. Now you see what we're doing is we're saying whatever common name the user has passed in here. Uh, we want to take that common name. We want to apply it to the common parameter here. So if the user said redbud, we're going to say get common redbud, uh, and we're going to do that substitution. That'll work, but you know, there's an even easier way. We can say this. Uh, we can say query dot set properties. This is one of the things I like about uh, well-written Java that, that holds to the Java standard. And that is, I just pass in this parameter plant. It will automatically marry up the getter setters from this plant object to the parameters that we've specified here, in this case, common. Okay, uh, so I don't need this line anymore. This, this line down here is a bit more dynamic because if I change the internal structure of this plant DTO, let's say I add more attributes, maybe native, edible, likes water, likes sun, things like that, uh, and I change this query to include things like edible, native, and things like that, then there's automatically going to be a marriage between the getters and setters of this DTO in the query that we have up here. That's very powerful. It reduces the amount of modifications we need to do to our program as we continue to build out our program. So I kind of prefer this. Let's stick with this. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do our control one trick again. And actually, no, we don't need to do anything with that just yet. But what I will do is I'm going to say query. And let's take a look at the methods that we have on here. Of quite a few different options, but the one that I want to look at is list. So list, we'll select that, terminate with a semicolon, okay, and I'm going to control one, 
and let's assign this to a new local variable. Okay, I need to be on the list method for that just a moment. So control one. Okay. Um, assign statement to new local variable. List, list. Okay. And enter. And now what we can do is we can return that list. So the list that we get back here is essentially our list of results. So we could call it something like plant results or something like that. But the list that we're getting back here uh, is a list of results. Now we do have a slight dilemma here, which is notice that this uh, list does not include a generic identifier well, well our return type does. That's a little bit dirty. We have a couple of options. It gives us a warning here. Uh, we have a couple of options to fix this. Uh, one is to add a suppressed warnings, um, like so. It just says, okay, we realize that there's an issue here. Uh, we are going to say, uh, I'm going to say, so, so, you know, not going to worry about that warning for the moment. Truth is, we'll run this in a unit test in just a minute, and we'll make sure we're getting back what we hope to get back. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can do a little trick with casting where we uh, we could we could iterate over the list and cast each item. There are several options we could do there. Uh, there's one other thing we can do, which is uh, collections dot checked list. And we're going to say, OK, list comma and then type is going to be plant dot class. OK, and then I can control one and assign to new local variable okay and we'll call this plants like so and i'm going to add a generic identifier over here on list we're going to say list plant and then why don't i call this something a bit more descriptive oh no plants will be fine and then we'll simply return plants so there are a couple ways that we can handle this uh, conversion from an, an, a, a list that does not have a generic identifier uh, to one that does. We don't have much control over what we get back from query.list because that's just part of how Hibernate works. So we don't have a way to specify, hey, this is a list that contains plant objects. We have to take one extra step there. Now, as I take a second look at my method, I realize I did make one small mistake. I, first of all, didn't explain what this is from plants. That's not the plants table. Our table name is plants, the table that we're querying, but honestly, that's irrelevant. We have all of that mapped already in our HBM file, the plant HBM XML. So you see uh, plants is mapped here to the class called plant. In HQL, we don't use the table name. We use the class name instead, and the class name is plant singular. I mistakenly, just out of habit, put plants plural, thinking of the table name. So I'm going to remove that S, uh, and now we can go back and uh, we can continue thinking about our test and thinking about the table that we're going to query. Okay, now we don't have this wired up to our UI yet. Uh, that's okay. We'll take care of that in our next video. But what we can do is we can write a little unit test. So I'm going to control M. And we remember with our JUnit flux, if we put the unit test in the same package as the class that's being tested, then the unit test will run automatically uh, every time we, we test our, we save something in that package. So I'm going to save my work. Now, just a moment as I move the recorder down, I want to make sure that uh, my SQL is running. Uh, and so I click on, I see that WAMP server is online. That's good. I'm going to go to my browser and open a new window. And let's go to PHP my admin. So that's typically 127.0.0.1, and we see I have it uh, already in cache. And let's take a look at what we have in this table. We have a few things that we added uh, in a previous video. We have a few elements that we have in our plant table. Uh, we see right now I have, gosh, about, looks like about 15 elements there. That'll be enough for a pretty safe query. Uh, I could search on common name. Uh, well, let's see, I, I misspelled Redbud, but we'll go ahead and grab that misspelling. I could search on common name Redbud, like so. Highlight, Control-C. And let's go ahead and write a test class so that we can test this out. Okay. So back to Eclipse. Right-click. New. 
and then class. Okay, uh, test plant HBM DAO, that'll be our name. Uh, super class, we'll say test case, just a moment. There we go, JUnit framework test case. Okay, and finish. Okay, write a quick and dirty test method here. Uh, so, no test found it interesting. It already ran it and found that there, were, there was nothing it could test. So, at test annotation, and then we're going to say, uh, we will say something like verify uh, that uh, verify fetch by common name. Uh, that'll do. Okay. So we'll say given plant DAO, given plant DAO instantiated. Okay. Uh, looks like I need to add a little bit more here, don't I? So we'll say public void verify fetch by common name. Given plant DAO instantiated when common name is redbud. then verify results. Kind of vaguely worded, but okay, we'll run with that. So given plant uh, DAO is instantiated, uh, we'll go ahead and control one to create each of, each of these methods. Typical BDD given when then syntax. Control one and enter. Uh, control M to look at it in high def. Okay, given plant DAO is instantiated, so I'm gonna say uh, I'm going to say new uh, plant HBM DAO. Okay, just calling the constructor on that. Control one, assign statement to new field. That means it will be accessible uh, throughout our entire class here. Okay, so we've taken care of that. Yep, all is good there. Okay, and control shift O, see if we can get our test annotation. There we go, got our test annotation. Okay, when common name is redbud, so I'm going to say plant p equals new plant p dot set common redbud. Or, you know, I misspelled that, didn't I? So I need to put in the misspelled name redbudbud, whatever that is. Okay, I really should fix that in the database, to be honest with you. I know that. Okay. Uh, then we're going to say, uh, we're going to say plant, let's see, we'll go up to our then verify. Um, as a matter of fact, let me convert this to a field. Well, no, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Let's do it like this. Plant HBM DAO. And we're going to say fetch plants. And we're going to pass in this plant object we've created on lines uh, 27 and 28. And enter. And good. Okay. Now, this is going to return some results to us. Hang on one second. Looks like it went a little too far there. This is going to return some results to us. So let's control one. And once again, we're going to say uh, assign statement to new field. And we're going to say plants. So it's going to return a list of plants to us. Okay. Uh, then verify results. I can do several things here. I can say um, assert true, and we could say plants dot length or plants dot uh, let's see that's a list. So plants dot size rather is greater than zero. So assert that we have received at least one result. We could also iterate over the plants. We could say um, for each. Okay, and we could, so we're iterating over the collection that has been returned, and we could say something like, whoops, we could say something like assert equals, and then we could say plant.getcommon, and uh, boom, like so. We know that the common name should be Redbud, or actually the misspelled way we did Redbud, so I'll paste. Hopefully that's still in my buffer. It is. 
Okay, so we're saying let's iterate over the plant results that we've received and let's make sure that they're all red buds. Now, my real interest here is just to debug through this uh, to make sure that we're getting the results that we want without having a UI. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And now I'm going to control M. And I'm going to try and debug this. Okay, so I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say debug as and then JUnit test. And let's watch it step by step. So we get our debug message that we're going to switch to debug mode. That's exactly what we want. Okay, let's scroll down to line 18 so we can pick up with the debugger. Okay, uh, given plant DAO instantiated, I choose F5 and step into that. Shouldn't be any uh, significant surprises here. Okay, yep, that looks good. Okay. Uh, when common name is Redbud, again, shouldn't be any surprises here, and I have my, you know, messed up common name there. Okay. And now this is what we really want to see, because here's where it's doing the query. So we want to see if we're going to get results back here. Okay. Uh, it took a second, which is good. Uh, it, that, that indicates that something ran, and let's look what we have. Circus canadensis, Redbud, again, misspelled. Uh, I'm going to expand here on this list, element data object 10, and take a look at what we have. We have about seven or eight plants, yeah, that's zero index, so we have about eight plants. Uh, so far, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Okay, Circus canadensis, yep, and let's look at this last one here. Circus canadensis again, so about eight plants. Does that look roughly like our database? Because I have some duplicates here, so one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure enough, it returned only uh, the plants that have this common name, Redbud, like we see here. So I'm actually fairly excited right now. Uh, so I'm going to go back and we'll continue on with this debug, then verify results. This is what we really want to see. Assert true plant size is greater than zero. This is assuming that our database actually has these things called Redbuds. Uh, and let's see, plant size and Eclipse I can highlight. Control shift i and plant size is 8 as we thought. Now we're going to iterate over each of those eight plants and verify that their common name is Redbud. And you see every one of these tests is passing. We'll do this eight times. And honestly, I can go ahead and hit resume here. I think we're satisfied with what we've seen. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Java EE perspective and we're going to take a look and sure enough we get a green bar. Uh, we did get what we hoped for. Uh, test fetched by common name uh, did indeed pass. So in this video we've taken a look at how we can uh, create a simple H, uh, HQL query and we can query the database. Certainly there are more complex ways that we can do this. Uh, we will in a future video, we are going to call this down from the UI layer so that we can see these results in a table. One more thing I do want to do here is I'm going to right click and I need to put this new method into the interface. That's very easy to do in Eclipse. A simple right click refactor and then pull up will do the trick. So what we're saying is I want to add this new method I just made to the iPlant DAO. We'll choose next. And I'm going to choose finish. Now one trick, and I'll do this off camera, uh, one trick is that this is not the only, um, this is not the only method, I'm sorry, this is not the only implementation of that class. We also have our stub. So you see now our stub, well this will be, I'll just go ahead and do it now to be honest with you. You see our stub no longer satisfies that interface contract, so I have to go ahead and tell it, hey, uh, control one, and we'll say implement all all methods from the uh, superclass. You see that now has a has a red line on it, so we can fix that one pretty easily. Well, let's see. We'll come down here, see if we can fix it down here. Okay, it went ahead and added the method for me. That's fine. Uh, here, I'm just going to say return new array list plant uh, to and boom and boom and Control S, Control Shift O, organize imports, and then Control S. And we should be in good shape once that saves. Looks like it also wants us to add the word public. And save. Okay, we're in good shape. Uh, so in our next video, we're going to see how we can pull these through and show them 
on the user interface. I look forward to seeing you then.